Good morning, Scorpio. I hope everybody's doing great today. Um, we have so many wonderful messages that are coming through. And um, I'm really feeling great about today. There was actually like the static charge of energy that accompanied my meditation this morning. And I'm going to talk about that. Let's put this lovely little creature down. This is Apollo, my puppy. And uh, we're going to talk about what's coming through for you and uh, set in motion, hopefully, some great changes for the month ahead. First of all, let me introduce myself if you're brand new. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh, and uh, what we're going to be doing today is looking at the next month, the next six to eight weeks to be exact, on um, possibilities, available energy, things that you're going to be feeling and seeing. And this is very alchemic, meaning that we're going to change thoughts and actions to help manifest. Because the way that I read is that I don't think things are set in stone. I think that you're an active participant and creator. So whenever you choose to see this, whether you're watching it live or you watch it a little bit later on replay, it's going to set into motion some positive changes. So welcome. We're going to make this an amazing reading today. Um, just a couple notes about how it's going to be organized, and then I'll get straight into all the information, which I know you came for. Uh, I like to organize it in four or five major parts. I begin with a series of channeled messages, which are in front of me here. And basically, the way that I uh, arrive at channeled messages is I see some things through my dreams. Um, I also set intentions when I get up in the morning and I meditate. Also, because I work with nature totems, as I walk through the world, I see things here. So I actually met one of your totems this morning, um, a scarab beetle, which we'll be talking about, which comes through periodically. And it's a very powerful symbol, especially for those of you that have old connections to Egypt, past life connection, uh, connections to Egypt. So uh, we'll start with these channeled messages first. It's very psychic, it's very intuitive. It's without cards. That's just me as a medium reading for you. Then we're gonna take a look at the cards, which I read intuitively. And we're gonna look at the cards in a very open way. I don't force a lens, so to speak. So it's not gonna be about you, your partner or whatever. It's gonna just be what spirit's bringing to you. It could be that, it could be something else. So, uh, because why do I want to change that? Whenever we're doing a general sort of pulse check like this, I really like that to take on whatever particular energy it needs to. Then we'll take a look at health, wealth, love, and destiny so we can touch on those major points that I think all of us are curious about. We'll review it quickly, and then we'll move along to something I term the soul path. And the soul path is just one or two junctures in front of you, maybe an opportunity, maybe a challenge that deserve a little bit of extra uh, attention, plus a wild card, which is just something that the universe can show us that we haven't had a chance to see thus far. We'll do a quick meditation followed by your chance to ask me a psychic and silent question, which I will answer. Um, so you get a nice, wonderful, rounded reading today. And um, it always makes my day to be able to be here to read for you guys. So welcome. Uh, let's, uh, let's get started and talk about a couple things here as I'm doing that. First of all, I would love for you, uh, I'll, I'll mention this a couple times, but if you like what you see here today, it's free, hit that thumbs up. If you've never subscribed and it's your first time here, welcome. Consider subscribing so that you don't have to depend on the algorithm to see me again. Sometimes I read a comment and someone says, I haven't seen you for four years. Easy, just hit the subscribe, which is the equivalent of a follow button. If you wanna get notified, you can click on the bell icon. I'm also all across social media. So if you wanna get reminders on Instagram, Facebook, uh, and uh, even here on YouTube, you can you can subscribe. My username is always my name, except for Twitter, where it is um, an Ashball. See if I have the card here available. Yeah, so on Twitter, it's just an Ashball, but everywhere else it's my name. If you wanna show support today, please do that with the um, Super Chat Super sticker area here, which is the little dollar sign. You can also join the channel there. You'll see a bunch of folks today with um, green names. Um, so, you know, thank you to all of you that are sustaining, uh, supporting members. You can either do that here or you can join me on Patreon. Uh, you can click on my link in the pinned comment above and you can find information about all of that. And on replay, you can click applause. So just a couple quick notes to help you with all of that. Maria is going to be your moderator today. She can answer any high level questions you have about where to find things. Um, be nice to her, she's a, she's a great moderator. And, um, and that's it, let's get started. I don't answer questions. What, uh, what I do in this reading here today is basically channel what I need to for the collective. So I'm not gonna answer specific questions. Save it until the end, I will answer it then. You can also follow me on TikTok where I do shorter readings and um, I will do a lot of pick a card or bonus cards there. So there's a way for you and you can follow me on Instagram where I cross post. So that's a way you can get more questions answered if you want to. All right, let's get into today and talk about what's coming through. 
So you have two powerful totems today. I've been getting a lot of dual totems lately because I think we're doing a lot of movement and change. Um, we have the lightning, lightning itself, just lightning as in the, the phenomenon in the sky, and then the scarab beetle, which I saw in real life. So let's talk about both. Let me bring up a couple images of the two things that I saw. Um, so lightning really doesn't need a lot of description, but I'll, I'll kind of show uh, an image because it helps us just to kind of see it. So when I was doing some research on lightning, the fascinating thing is that it can happen both in the sky and also between the clouds. So it doesn't have to just be, um, I'm sorry, and also like between the clouds and the earth. It doesn't have to just be uh, sky and earth. It can be cloud and cloud, like in the atmosphere. So multiple types of lightning that happen. And then the other thing that I saw today as I was walking in Los Angeles was um, a scarab beetle. And it looked a lot like this. It's more iridescent in, in person, if I can find one where we can kind of see a little bit more of that iridescence and that shiny energy. Um, and I found out that this was a fig eater uh, scarab. So it kind of feeds off of fruit in the area, but it was beautiful. And as I was walking, it kind of scared Apollo <laughs> for a second because you can hear it. It was It's louder than a hummingbird, but it has that sort of humming frequency. And then it hovered for a second in front of us and in front of him, and then it moved on. So I knew we would have to talk about it. Let's start with the lightning first. So the lightning came to me in meditation. Um, I felt the electrical charge before I saw the flash or heard the, the thunder that uh, accompanied it. So the change, the energy, because basically you can feel something coming before it happens. Um, and that's kind of, to me, what lightning represents. Uh, but, but this was almost like, pre-lightning, I felt the charge, then I saw the flash and heard the crackling sound. That was the other thing. It wasn't just the thunder. I actually heard the static. So it was maybe the static movement in the environment, or if you've ever heard a big um, sort of thunder in the sky, then there's this crackling that happens afterwards. So I heard the static and the crackling energy as well. One thing that I didn't even capture in cards is that I feel like this could also be static that comes through in uh, communication. So you wanna be really mindful of the channels of communication you choose and the tone in which uh, you speak using those channels. So for instance, if you're doing chat <laughs> or if you're texting, some sort of written real-time communication, uh, you want to maybe pause a little bit and read what you write before you click return or before you send something, because something that you see as direct, someone else could take as rude. Something that you see as just fun or honest, they could see as forward or um, difficult to, to parse. So less is more, um, read it a few times, and then if you need to clarify it, clarify it. I think it has specifically to do with the real time sort of typing that we do nowadays. It could also extend to email but I saw static, which can be miscommunication, misfires, and just like the two charged elements, sometimes that creates an argument. Um, we'll talk about that next, it's a nice segue. Lightning is an electrostatic discharge between two electric, electrically charged regions. So basically there are two areas with a bunch of energy and something has to happen and they come together and it's a release of that energy. Um, like I said, it can happen between two clouds or it can happen between the sky and the earth. This is a mechanism, basically. It's a discharge, a release. Um, you may need to find some sort of a channel or a release for emotions and pent up energy. It could be uh, that you're feeling sort of like, I can't wait any longer for something or I'm really angry about this. Or, I'm really excited about this or whatever, anxiety, nerves, um, pent up emotions. And it could be of any sort, positive or negative. There needs to be a, a channeling. So find some constructive outlets for this energy, which I'm picking up on, which I heard, which I felt, which I saw um, in the form of lightning and thunder. Uh, you want to, of course, do things like meditation. Uh, yoga would count here, any sort of exercise. Art, of course, because that's another form of channeling. You can talk to someone. Um, therapy can also just be conversing and hanging out with friends. Um, basically, there just needs to be different types of exchanges going on that are productive, that are a release, that give you a sense of, ah, I got that, that, that out of my mind, body, and spirit, okay? Avoid any sort of charged conversations, in, in air quotes here, <laughs> um, because they could lead to the Tower or the Ten of Swords. Charged, what do I mean? I mean that 
you're agitated and the other person is agitated or you're in very different emotional states, one may be high, one may be low, you're coming together and it's not gonna be a fantastic sort of thing. So you need to find a little bit more of a middle ground. Uh, as I said, I don't know if it was in the uh, mid-month collective or just recently, it's not your job to come from up here to the bottom of the well. All you have to do is kind of come down a little bit and modify the message and then you can loop back up. We don't have to go all the way down if someone's way down there, but we have to try to see them. We have to reach out a little bit. Uh, and likewise, if you're really, really low and someone's really, really high and you don't wanna bring them down, just say, I'm so happy for what you're talking about. I need a little bit of time and space at the moment because I'm dealing with a lot on my plate. How about we talk tomorrow? I need, I need some sleep. I'm a little bit worn out. I can't, I can't manage this at the moment, but I care about it. There's a lot of ways that you can defer or delay a conversation and still show support, interest, and um, state your intent for why you need some time. And that's gonna be stronger than trying to meet when you're tired, when you're emotionally charged, et cetera. You may need um, a third party to kind of step in and help as well. So an objective third party, a mediator, um, a lawyer, or someone that doesn't have as much at stake, they just wanna help it get done, uh, whatever this is, that would be key. And also you might wanna practice or refine your message. This is what I was talking about with respect to texting or typing. Read it, say it, have the computer read it to you and then send it. It can actually be auspicious. This was the next thing that I wanted to talk about. And um, by the way, thank you so much for all the support that I'm seeing in chat. Um, lightning, can, uh, lightning appears naturally when you look at the tower card in Rider Waite Smith, you see like the top of it coming off and this big bolt of lightning coming in. Um, it does not have to mean like, oh my goodness, my life is ending. I see that as divine intervention. In, inter intervention. If we think of like Greek mythology, you know, Zeus, God of the sky, um, he would throw that bolt of, of lightning out there to create change, to make something happen. So I see it as that sort of lightning in a bottle or lightning doesn't strike twice. So you got to strike while the iron is hot. There can be this energetic download that you're going to do something with. It's, it's power, it's, it's intervention. Um, so, but divine intervention in its most positive or heightened form, lightning can be inspiration. It can be rapid yet positive change. And it can also be um, some sort of a groundbreaking or life changing energy or event, whether it's a move, a change of job, or even a shift in relationship status, uh, there's going to be an adjustment and also some subsequent action that needs to happen as a result of the lightning. So that is the positive uh, energy. The tower gets misinterpreted sometimes. So even though we're not even yet into the cards there that came through, the tower can mean, oh, you're moving. Oh, you just made a really big change. I look at the other cards around the tower to figure out if it's good or bad. I look at the placement and the spread to figure that out. I look at the card itself and see what I'm pulling off of it. So let's not worry just yet that I'm picking up on the lightning because I feel like it could be a really positive shift. Um, it also encourages you to be the source of the change rather than being the tower, be Zeus. Be the one that's throwing the bolt of lightning and making the change happen. Be the agent of the divine or the channel of the divine, not, not the recipient of the action that's happening because you were waiting and because you gave the universe or others around you no choice but to make the action happen. So you are Zeus throwing the bolt. You're figuring out what you wanna change, how you wanna change, what kind of um, a path or a role in this that you wanna take. I think I spelled this right, but um, in uh, music, or if we're talking about sound, there's a sine wave like S-I-N-E, um, and just like an ocean wave, and that because we're that's really what the thunder would be would be a, an audible sine wave. Um, you're going to ride the wave of change, kind of like a surfer, right? So that's how you can take tower energy and use it. You can't control the fact that change is happening or is about to happen, but you can decide what to do with the energy of change and transformation. So um, there you go. Hopefully that helps a little bit understand that you've you've got power here and it's power of choice and um, channeling what you want to channel into and how you want to react to all of this is coming through. Okay, good stuff, really good stuff. All right, now talking about that beautiful iridescent scarab beetle that I saw this morning, I'll pull up a picture of it again. Um, again, it was a fig eating beetle, which of course, not great for those of you that are farmers or gardeners, but it is a beautiful beetle nonetheless. Um, so here's that shiny little beetle. Um, 
And it really, it was, this one, it may even be a different variety because it was, I want to say it was kind of like the size of a US quarter or bigger. It, it would be like, it was, it, it would, it was bigger than my, like as big as my palm. I just saw this big beetle buzzing in the air. Um, and for those of you that live in desert climates, you know that the beetles can get pretty big. So uh, both Apollo and I stopped for a second to listen to the frequency of the beetle. And, um, and I believe that it actually clarified the lightning totem, okay? So it's a positive change transformation and um, you will exit it stronger than you started it. In ancient Egypt, scarabs were the symbol of life and death. They were revered. They were also protective symbols. I didn't even write this down because I only have so much time to write the cards here in the morning, but uh, I believe it's also a protective uh, source. So as long as you listen, uh, because the lightning is the, the energy, but the thunder, or in this case, the sign, the, the vibration that I heard is saying, keep your ears, keep your eyes open, pay attention to the signs that you're receiving, because you'll also be led down the path um, that's going to be hopefully of least resistance or most positivity for you. Uh, again, I think it was a fig eater, uh, but what I uh, discerned from this is no matter what it is, something sweet would follow um, the upcoming change. Even if the change itself was a little bitter, there's something sweet on the horizon. So be optimistic, be open, because you probably know this by now, but if you start to expect something good to happen, something good will happen. So let's expect that the change will be good. Let's open ourselves up to positive movement because of this change. And guess what? It'll be positive. If you just focus on the fact that you're changing and you don't want to, and you kind of go down this um, series of issues, it's like going down the ladder, right? Or down a rabbit hole, then you're going to pull in negativity. So it feels like it's sweet. The beetle, again, if we there are two different types of scarabs that I'm going to be looking at. One is the fig eater, which eats fruit. The other one we're going to look at is the um, dung beetle, which is associated with life, death, and rebirth, um, and kind of rolls up dung in this, in this ball and keeps moving it. It's like the wheel of fortune. And I think that's also really auspicious for you. So on to the scarab beetle that's in Egypt. Um, again, it's death and rebirth, but you must move it forward. If you ever looked at a, um, you can Google it, a little tiny beetle and it moves this big mound of earth basically. Um, and it helps fertilize, it helps move things. And it's because that's really what dung is, is fertilizer. And so sometimes we have to take that stuff that we don't like move it around and rebuild. So basically the beetles coming in after the, the tower and constructing, it's the architect, right? But it's little, but it moves big mountains. It, like if we look at a lot of insects, like um, what am I thinking of ants? They can move these gigantic leaves and things that are like many times their body weight. Same thing with the beetle, it's moving this gigantic mound of earth and other things <laughs> above its head. So move things forward. Hard work will be rewarded. It may be hard work, but it's worth it. Abundance is in root, um, but it's cyclical. So if you're in a place right now where you don't have the job you want, you don't have as much money as you want, you're working harder than you want, you're not satisfied, it's okay. It's a cycle, you're moving through it. You can change it. You're Zeus, throw the lightning bolt in the direction. You're the dung beetle. You can take what you don't like and move it somewhere else and build something else. You're not stuck unless you wanna be stuck. So we got two movement totems for you. Um, and the scarab flies too, right? So it, we have everything in the air and a little bit of the earth here too. And we also have fire. <laughs> and I would even say the wind is involved. You got all the elements here. So it's the magician, you're the magician. If I put them all together in my head, you just have to decide what to do with it, all right? Um, I think that's it for the, the scarab, but the scarab's wonderful. It's also, like I said, a symbol of protection. Uh, it was associated with the sun. It was associated with death, rebirth, reincarnation. It's very powerful. So basically it's reminding us that we are active creators. We are timeless, endless beings, even though we're in this sort of physical body, which has a finite amount of time that it's gonna spend on this planet. But if we tap into that lightning from above, some cool stuff can happen. The last was very interesting because um, this last totem or, or message here, because I just talked about the chicken the other day, <laughs> but I was focusing now on the little baby chicks basically, or baby birds. I couldn't quite tell what kind of bird they were. I could just see that they were really fluffy. I don't think that they were all actually chickens. They could have been any type of bird. So just baby birds. I saw you tiptoeing on the ground and you were careful and aware of where you were walking. And it was good because there, were these, there was a mama bird and then there were these little tiny chicks that were following it. I saw about eight, maybe, maybe not quite a dozen, 
but I, I counted eight or I remembered eight when I woke up. And I think that this connects with August, the eighth month of the year. I think it could, could also be a series of events. It could also be the eight of pentacles, eight of wands, eight of swords. You need to open your eyes up, eight of cups, um, something that you can come back to a new cycle. It's all good. Eights are good in tarot. Um, with the Eight of Swords, we want to reverse it to open up and take the blindfolds off and get out of a stuck cycle. But every every other Eight card is very good. So there are no more broken um, broken eggshells or like broken glass. I feel like you know when you're walking on eggshells, you're afraid you're going to break it. They've already hatched. What you have to do, however, is be careful. And like a mama bird, you have to help nurture your ideas, your dreams, your hopes, things around you. There's still some delicate stuff. If you're in a new relationship or a new partnership or a new endeavor, it needs time. So when looking at love and relationships and projects, feed it, nurture it, um, don't take it for granted. And um, yeah, I think August is gonna be really eventful. We're gonna be looking at that anyway, so this is perfect. So that is everything. I'm really excited about the symbols. I think they are all interesting and positive. So uh, let's get into the cards and see what they have to, to show. If you missed anything, you can go back and listen to what I said uh, on replay later. And also at the beginning, I gave you all the different ways that you can connect with me on social media. I post these cards usually one to two days after I'm done. <clears throat> Depends how many readings I'm doing consecutively. But you can find them on Instagram, uh, Facebook, YouTube, my website. I also subtweet them out on Twitter, all of the above. So feel free to follow me and uh, you can always access these later. And I do post to the community tab here on YouTube. So it's a good place to look at stuff if you wanna see what's coming through. All right, let's, uh, let's focus in on the messages that are coming through for the next six to eight weeks. You can watch this by the way for sun rising and moon sign. I read from a, a Western perspective, but uh, I don't see why you couldn't use this for Vedic if you read that way. So um, just follow the sign that you're looking for in whatever you read for, but I am <clears throat> Western or tropical, just because that question comes up a lot. Okay. <clears throat> also, the messages that I deliver at the beginning can be for anybody who's present. So if you're ever just in need of a message, you can stop by. <clears throat> and that's the way that I work. Scorpio, next six to eight weeks. Let's see what's coming through for you. There's another card that wants to come out, so we're going to clarify the final one with this. I don't normally do that, but it came out. someone asking if we have the tower i don't see it It would be the blasted oak i think in this deck but we have a ten of wands that has um some fire energy at the top which we'll talk about All right, let's take a look at all the cards and uh, we'll break it down and see what messages are coming through for you. All right, so let's begin with your catalyst card. Uh, we have the queen and interesting, interesting energy with this one. We have the moon underneath it, what looks like a lotus blossom and then a hand holding a snake on this particular card, which is really cool. So whenever I see a queen in tarot, uh, basically, or even in an oracle deck like this, what I'm seeing is the ability to 
um, both control and also kind of like nurture or birth or um, somehow bring the sort of divine feminine slash fertile energy into things. So you definitely have the power to affect change or to create something this month. Um, the other thing that we see with this, with the moon um, is this, again, cyclical sort of energy, which we've been talking about. So it could be one month. It could also be highly influenced by your emotional state. And the snake on this is the power, just like the lightning bolt. Um, you want to hold on to that power and work with it. And then if, what I really love whenever I see a lotus blossom is this idea of coming through difficulty and prospering, coming through the murky waters and blossoming, just like the dung beetle works with things that most of us wouldn't want to deal with, but finds something fertile and, and also helps enrich the land too. So all of that is here. Plus we see like this kind of like amulet here, um, which kind of, there's a lot of um, first chakra energy around this too. So kind of like the color that I chose for us today. Uh, many of us want to be looking at power. Lightning is power too. So this is going to be a decision on how to express your power and your desire and um, I would say mostly the power and grounding and sort of security issues this month you want to deal with. So if something doesn't feel right, if you don't feel supported or protected, speak up, use your voice in a really positive way and take that lower chakra energy. Just make sure you elevate it through the heart, through the throat, pull some of this in there too. But there's nothing wrong with a little bit of first chakra when you're trying to go through and get something done. People need to know that you're serious. So it puts power behind it. Um, you know, not just your gut, but literally I'm a strong person. I know who I am and I know what I want. Let's pull some of this color in there. Okay, the rest of it is coming from, uh, if we just look at it from color perspectives, we would see like third and first chakras. Um, and we have a little bit of black energy here, which can also just be grounding with the earth element too. Uh, so that's gonna be important. Uh, this is gonna be about emotional state. You wanna make sure that that doesn't get in the way. Use it to your advantage. Don't let it control you, okay? Okay, and I see someone joking around, but the, the point here is to not necessarily kind of like scare people, it's to show them that, you know, you, you're you not gonna be pushed around. So there's a way to be sensitive, um, nurturing, but not a pushover and not someone that people feel like they can take advantage of because a lot of times healers uh, and light workers can get kind of like pushed over. And so this is about finding power, strength, and grounding so that you stand your ground. Um, it's not necessarily about saying something negative, which I, I saw in that comment. And I know you were joking, so I'm not that upset. It's more about um, just sort of saying, I'm stronger than you think, and that doesn't work with me. Holding your ground, holding your space. That's really what I'm talking about. So this isn't, this doesn't have to be a, we don't want to kind of like take first chakra and think that it's bad. It's just really, I'm, you know, finding your strength, finding your power. All right, we have the nine of pentacles at the center. It's reverse. I love nine of pentacles. Nine of pentacles shows independence, abundance. And what is he doing? He's holding that snake. Um, and I think he's also shaking a tambourine. No, he's holding like a Ouroboros, I think it's called. It's the two snakes that kind of eat each other. Couple of snakes basically here. So I think there could be a power struggle for some of you um, or an evenly met person that comes into your life. Uh, same level, same energy. It's interesting, sometimes we wanna find a divine partner. If you find a true divine partner, they're going to be as strong, if not stronger than you. Uh, and what you'll be working through is how, how does that feel? How does it feel to be around a really strong um, partner in your life? For the rest of you, with the nine of pentacles, let's talk about it. This is independence, this is abundance, this is uh, having learned the lessons about how to make things work financially and putting them to practice. With it reverse, we want to be a little bit careful to not push away good assistance if it's offered up. Wisdom, advice, support, because it's there for you if you want it, right? So it's good to be independent. It's good to not need things from other people. But sometimes it's good to accept help. Sometimes it's good to listen and to be able to hold space with someone else. So this is about finding independence, but not being alone, finding a way to get stuff done, but not having to take on an unnecessarily, uh, unnecessary amount of work. Uh, because if we look at the top, we see the 10 of wands, which can be a burden. And we'll get to that in a second. But I think 
you can delegate, you can access things, you can pace yourself. And that's what the nine of pentacles in reverse is showing me. You've got a lot of resources and a lot of abundance and a lot of um, opportunity in front of you. So just leverage it and use it wisely. Okay. Really good resource card to come through. If I had to pick one, that's the best, but it's one of the best because it shows me more is on its way as well. Um, of course, I would take the 10 of pentacles, but six of pentacles is my bare minimum. And everything above that starts to get good. Um, everything below it, we see some options with exception to the ace and the third. So, um, so ace of pentacles and three of pentacles are pretty good, but there's some other ones in there that show balance or issues or holding back. This tells me you're working with a lot already. So I like that. What's modifying it, but the king of swords, we have um, wands or bows in this deck and swords or arrows. So we have the um, knight of arrows and we have the hawk coming through as the symbol of this. Interesting that normally I would associate communication with this card, but this is about, I'm looking at like hawk and eagle eyes, like listening and watching. Um, so I want you to be very aware of things and then go after it because whenever we're looking at these birds of prey or hunters, they're very able and ready to go after what they want. They know that they're the ones that have to do it. Um, and as I said that, where did I feel the activation? But right here in my um, solar plexus. So for some of you, there's a, that power struggle that I was talking about is coming through for sure. Yeah, it was like squarely between my heart and my belly button. I felt a, like a little jab of energy. So what you wanna be focusing on is re reclamation of power. I had a great piece of advice uh, from a chiropractor that I went to the other day. And uh, you know, all of us, especially if you're healers, so for those of you that are nurses, teachers, mothers or fathers, um, just a really good friend to others, sometimes there's this feeling that you have an obligation to help everyone that crosses your path. The truth of the matter is that the people around you should want to receive the help as well. And if they don't, then you have to let them sort of come to you. And you can also say no. If someone has an unrealistic request or they're not observing boundaries, it's totally within reason and um, I would say even what's appropriate to just say no. So you don't have to help everyone, um, but you, you can try to help anyone that wants to have the help. Uh, but, but, but you get to decide too. There's, a, there's consent on both sides, even with someone that is tasked with assistance. If someone's cruel or un unreasonable or unwilling or unreceptive to assistance, you have the right to say no or to find someone else. You can say, you deserve help, but I'm not gonna be the channel for the help. Nothing wrong with that. So figure out how much you wanna give. Um, but ultimately with this, it's about being aware of things, listening to things. You're gonna hear and see things um, that people may take for granted as they're communicating. And that's gonna be a key piece of information that's gonna help you with something. So eagle eyes or hawk eyes and hawk ears in this particular situation to pick up on key things and then follow up on them. Have you ever noticed that very thoughtful friends or family members will hear you say something and then it ends up showing up as a gift or a task because they remember that was your favorite food or you've been looking for this or when you were a kid, you had this and you lost it and all of a sudden they find that gift. They paid attention, they took note, they followed up and followed through and it was amazing. You can make a difference by doing that. This is how you can land a job, for instance. You can pay attention to someone on the news or social media and you can see that there's something that they're looking for. You come through and you say, I've done my homework and this is it. So this is about doing your homework, okay? Uh, we'll look at the deep past now. We have the five of arrows, which is the five of uh, swords here. Um, and with this particular one, what I like about this, um, <laughs> we see like a, a goat here, I guess, kind of going through the, or a ram, um, avoiding all of the arrows being slung its way. So there's a really cool illustration of this in the Afro goddess deck that I have where we see someone licking the sword and there's blood on the sword. It's very visual, but it also kind of gets the point home, which is careful what you say. Um, so for some of you, this is about not letting the words exit your mouth because it also hurts you. So you're hurting the other person, you're hurting yourself. And if there's an argument with, or if someone's trying to trigger you, you can, you can just avoid it. Not in a way that it's like, I'm not paying attention to it. It's like, I'm not gonna go down that path this time or again. Uh, you know that some people just operate from wanting to feed off of that. They're hunting down someone that they can kind of take in and then they're gonna feed off of that because this is a hunter card. So they're using a different metaphor here. Someone's looking for someone that they can feed off of. You're not that person this month because the card's reversed. So just ignore it and meditate on it and say, not me, not today, not, not ever actually, and push it back, okay? So next piece here, we got a lot of, um, got a lot of swords coming through for you, which is interesting. So now we have the king of swords 
And we have the kingfisher coming through in this particular um, illustration. Uh, so there could be this interesting dance between a teacher and a student, because when I'm looking at a king and a knight, or uh, someone that's subordinate, or you're working for someone, there's a little bit of a power struggle here. The interesting thing that I see is that you're more equal. Um, so whatever kind of gap exists, I see equal knowledge, equal power. And this month is about balancing the power, because why? Because in the intuitive download today, I had lightning, which is a discharge between two electri electrically charged regions. And they don't have to be, you know, I feel like they're equal here. So I just feel like there's gonna have to be a discussion and maybe a balancing of power. Even though we didn't get balance, even though we didn't get the two of pentacles, I don't think. What I see between the king and the knight of swords is a discussion about goals, about power, about um, priorities. The, the king of swords is upright. This is you, this is recent past, this is good. So hold your own, use the first chakra to kind of help you be strong. And I think it's gonna be really great. And um, this bird is in flight, things are gonna move. Things are gonna move in the direction that you need them to move. It's upright, nothing really bad. We love a good king or queen of swords because it gets things done. Sometimes people don't expect you to have a resonance in your voice that you do. So if you're very quiet sometimes, or if, if you don't raise your voice, don't be afraid to show a little bit of passion, not to the point of scaring someone. But again, just showing no. You can say there's different types of no. There's like, no, don't do that. And there's like, no, no. <laughs> like if you have a kid or, uh, or if there's someone on, like it's kind of like a honking of the horn, just a quick one, not like the obnoxious. It's just like a horn. That's actually a great way to think of it. If someone's fa falling asleep or something and you need to wake them up, you do a tap of the, ho the horn so that they can hear it. Or if they're not looking at the light, just a tap. If someone's rude and ridiculous, you do a longer one to say, hey, be careful, you're gonna hurt someone or don't do that with me. You don't keep hitting it because then eventually you could actually cause an accident. Um, someone could get angry, they could just slam on the brakes. Same thing with the conversation. You wanna just lightly tap the horn and say, no, or wake up or this isn't right, okay? Now let's look at your 10 of wands card here. We have responsibility as the, um, the caption on it. And a lot of you are dealing with a lot. Feels like you've taken on a lot of responsibility. Uh, maybe you've felt that other people haven't picked up their part of the, the bargain. The good news with the 10 of wands is you're making progress. You're gonna get through this, but you don't have to do it all on your own. So almost always you see a burdened 10 of wands um, participant. We'll see someone walking and it's a lot to carry. So just like I was talking about, I practice my own self-care. So going to a chiropractor, going to a acupuncturist, to a massage therapist, working out, stretching, doing yoga, swimming, doing anything to kind of move the body and take care of your spine is gonna be really important. Obviously, everybody's body is different. So many of you are gonna to need to work with your doctor to figure out what you can do, but pay attention to your spine. It goes all the way, it even goes up here into the skull. So you could be having things here, it could be in your neck, it could be all the way around the seat of your spine where your, um, like where your tailbone is. But that whole region needs a little bit of love because you may be taking on a lot of stress. When I went to the chiropractor the other day, he could feel it here. So when I help all of you, sometimes I, you know, there's, there's energy that I have to get rid of. So I practice good self-care and I get that out of me so that I can focus on um, dealing with my own stuff. So do what you've got to do to let go of the burden because we talked about that sort of pressure that was building up just like a pressure cooker has that rocker on the top and it's kind of helping alleviate it so the pot doesn't blow up. We need something that's going to be the valve, the pressure valve. Otherwise the lightning bolt happens. Uh, so you need to pay attention to that. What's really cool and I think the reason that this was mistaken in chat for the uh, tower initially, is if you look at the top we see um, so a fire, basically. This is showing me that you're gonna be able to use this and create something. Why else would you be carrying all of those tools or all those wands up the hill? Uh, if not to build, if not to have fuel, if not to kind of create. Wands are also um, basically the element of fire, energy, potential. So what are you doing with the potential in front of you with the opportunity? What is 10, ten of wands? Potentially a move. Um, it could be travel, it could be shorter term travel. Normally, um, like if I'm reading for someone that's moving, the move itself usually is the tower and the 10 of wands is the packing, the preparation, the visits and the stuff back and forth in between. But I'm seeing back and forth. So some of you may have travel for work, travel for pleasure. You could be 
preparing for a larger move. Um, it's the decision that I want to move. Usually the physical move itself is the tower of the world, but I'm seeing preparation for a shift or a movement in your life, okay? We have the queen of wands next. I love queen of wands, she's magic, um, because this is a very unusual queen of wands, but the traditional queen of wands would be in the desert. She would have a sunflower, she would have the magical cat by her, and she can create something out of nothing. Uh, what we have here is a symbol of abundance. So the hair, obviously, when you look at it, you would think of reproduction, you know, rabbits multiply. <laughs> There's a reason that they're abundant. Um, so quick movement is what I see with this one. Um, not only does the hair move fast, but the reproduction happens pretty fast too. I saw baby chicks, they could have just as well been baby rabbits. So what I see is a lot, but you're gonna have to take care of that. It's kind of like a litter of cats or, you know, puppies or something. There's a lot, there are a lot of little mouths to feed. Some of you may be in a position of power, management or authority where you've got to take care of the people underneath you. And it, uh, it felt like I was having a hard time herding all of these little baby birds around me. And I saw a couple that might've gotten away, um, but I, I was able to get most of them and make sure that I wasn't stepping on them or anything. Watching hurt feelings, stepping on people, um, making sure that all those little things are growing, all the projects, all the mouths, all the, all the um, relationships. So you've got to manage that management, resource management, even though she's not the queen of um, pentacles, sometimes I see queen of wands, she's the project manager. So she's looking at timelines, um, deadlines, high level overview, where the queen of pentacles would be the financial person looking at the money, looking at how to kind of manage all of that. But this is a step above it, not worrying just about the money, it's worrying about the big picture, okay? Don't lose track of the big picture. Seven of arrows, uh, seven of swords, insecurity, interesting. Okay, so a lot of times, if a person in your life is misbehaving, because the seven of swords can be that, it's someone in the background that is trying to get away with something, right? Um, that thinks that they're beyond our periphery, but they're not really. Uh, here's, here's my message to you. If someone is trying to do something, you're gonna see it. Your intuitive, uh, capabilities are fine-tuned right now, and you're going to have the capacity to see through illusions. Um, it's also a warning for those of you that might be trying to fly under the radar and think, well, like, I don't, don't have to do my homework. The teacher won't notice. I don't have to pay my taxes. It doesn't make a difference. I don't have to do this. It, won't. it will. You'll get audited. The teacher will notice. These things are going to pop through. Follow rules and regulations. Um, don't try to, to get away with something because that's gonna happen. We see this person kind of being penned in. The insecurity piece is the reason why some of this is happening for, like if there's someone in your life that doesn't know how to be authentic, transparent, isn't responsible for doing the things they say they're gonna do, somewhere in their life they felt like they maybe were a little less than, they're working with insecurities, self-defeating sort of things as well. So you just wanna call them out. The way to defeat or to transmute the uh, seven of swords is to say, I see you, don't do this. That doesn't work with me. That's why I was kind of talking about the first chakra energy. So use your strength, use your power, don't abuse it, don't kind of be too pushy because we don't want the 10 of wands in reverse, which can be abusive. We want it to just be strong, move on. That's what you can tell someone like that. Not here, move on, find someone else. You pick the wrong person um, to do this with. So as a parent, as a teacher, as a friend, you give someone a first and final warning. And just if it, depending on the severity of the seven of swords incident, it can just be a final warning and say, no more, we're done. But if you want to sort of like see if they can grow, you can do that. Um, but seven of swords needs to be dealt with. Show them that you see it, needs to be stopped, it needs to be repaired, it needs to be fixed. And if it, it, if it isn't, you release that person, okay? Um, that way they know they can't get away with it with you, okay? Sometimes, especially with pets, with children, or just with people in our lives, they try to just see what, what your limits are. So at its best, Seven of Swords can just be someone testing you. At its worst, they're trying to get away with something and they shouldn't and you're not gonna let them um, because you're powerful, because all of your symbols are power this month, so I'm not worried about this. Uh, but it is in your ego. So in your ego, it's about the insecurity that we see here. And in your ego, it's about not feeding other people's uh, behavior because you're afraid to kind of like talk to them. So don't be insecure in your power and don't do something because you're insecure. Just trust in yourself. You can do this, all right? 
looking in the environment, we have the Five of Cups. She's reversed, but I love this particular version of it because we see the magic of changing perspective. We see actually the caption reads ecstasy and she's uh, dancing on a pentacle, which is pointed towards the sky, which is great, it's pointed towards spirit. The card was reversed, however. So for all, for all of you out there right now, this is about changing the perspective. And this is why I was saying, if you expect something positive, it comes through. If you expect something negative, there's a reason that you see the inverted pentagram on the devil card. It's because you're inviting in negativity. So don't invite in negativity. Put the pentacle in the upright position, invite in spirit, invite in the divine elevate your thoughts and energy, and then turn all the cups upright. Everything was for a purpose. Everything is happening for a reason. So dance the dance of creation, not destruction. That's the sort of thing. So whatever has gone on, there's there might have been a loss of time, of energy, of resources, even a property or something like that, but you're going to be okay. It's going to strengthen you. And just like the tower firms up the foundation, you're going to be okay. All right. Looking at um, hopes, fears, and opportunity, we have uh, the moon card here and um, the moon on the water is an interesting sort of <laughs> um, indication here. But what we see in the background looks like it could be Taurus, right? So some of you may have a Taurus in your life. It could be a part of your chart somewhere. Could also be the bullish nature that we would associate with a bull. Um, so keeping an open mind because this card is reversed, not letting emotions uh, get the better of you, not letting someone bully you because of their own uh, lack of control of their emotions. The moon in general is a very divine symbol. I talked about it at pretty good, great length, I think at our mid-month collective, which is um, on my main channel page if you haven't seen it. But it reveals to us sometimes things that we don't wanna see, sometimes things that we need to deal with. Um, a lot of times hopes and fears, it's very interesting that this came through in hopes and fears. Uh, with a divine partner in your life, you should be able to discuss things that inspire, things that scare, things that make you curious. Um, and that's really just about going into all of that. Ultimately, the moon is powerful too, because it what it rules the tides. And we were talking about riding the sine wave. If you can control your emotions, you can control your future. You can control things around you. You can mold things around you. You can kind of be the magician that we talked about. We got two cards for your outcome. We'll pick the first one and then I'll pick the clarifying. So we have six of cups, super positive, super auspicious. Six of cups can be a connection to the past, usually a positive one. It can be a divine partnership. It can be uh, a sort of playful and childlike energy that pulls other people in. It's charismatic. Reversed, it's showing that for some of you, there's a feeling that you've lost some of these things. You've lost maybe touch with an old friend, maybe touch with the inner child. Maybe you feel like you're having a hard time just having fun. You're taking yourself too seriously. Um, and this is about reconnecting with the things that make you happy the childlike energy. Could also be a divine partnership coming through. When I look at love, we'll, we'll drill into that a little bit more. Um, let's take a look at what was on top of that, which was the nine of cups. So you got two cups cards here. And this one has a caption that says generosity on it. By the way, the other one had reunion, which makes sense because I touched on that. Uh, but this is interesting because it's a pretty balanced picture of the guy, but sometimes this can be bipolar or polarized, let's use that word, that's better, when we have it reversed. So the lightning that I talked about, the highly charged electromagnetic pockets that have to diffuse, that can be this. And I talked about high and low. So there can be a high and low energetic uh, connection that's happening this month and you wanna be careful. Basically for you, this is the sunny side of the street or the silver lining, looking at something from its most elevated form. So I love it when I see a nine of cups in a reading for someone, it tells me they have a sunny disposition that um, that they're optimistic. When it's reversed, we sometimes let a disappointment derail us, like uh, or take us off our path. Don't let disappointment dis derail you or take you off your path. You you really deserve to get all that you have worked hard for. Okay, um, controlling the emotions is so important this month. And um, listen, the sign is definitely connected to emotions, so you don't want to put anything under the rug. I think you should feel how you feel and decide what you wanna do about it. I think that's gonna be the most important thing. Uh, I'll take passion over none. All right, so let's take a look now at the expanded forecast. We're gonna look at health, wealth, love, and destiny and get a clearer vision of everything that I talked about. Health, mind, body, and spirit. 
self-acceptance came through, self-love. So this is so important. It doesn't matter if you're a child, um, if you're an adult, or if you're retired and just kind of like enjoying life. The most important thing, and I think it does come oftentimes with age, but it's not a guarantee, is to love who you are, where you are in your path in life. Because when you love yourself, or at least accept yourself, acceptance is that sort of gateway to love, then you invite others to do the same. If there's something that you need to say or do in your life, when you start it with acceptance, when you know that it's this is, this is how it is, and then you talk to someone about it, whether it's a health challenge, a relationship challenge, uh, I mentioned coming out a lot, that's important. Whatever, whatever your truth is, when you say it from a place of love and acceptance, others accept you and it becomes something really, really powerful and important. Have you ever noticed that if you ask a question, like permission for something versus declaring something and inviting someone to celebrate it with you, there's a much different outcome with that. So when you say, I'm excited about this and I just wanted to share it with you, the other person will kind of, you put them in a place where they would feel weird if they didn't say, well, that's great, tell me more about it. Versus like, I don't know, what do you think about this? You, you put yourself on the fence and you ask for permission or acceptance, it's less powerful. So put yourself in that place where you say, um, I love you, I love me, and I, I want to share something with you, whatever that may be. That is a great way to um, enter into a negotiation, a proposal, like I said, a coming out, or any sort of difficult conversation because you've accepted what the information is. When you've accepted and you trust it and you're grounded in it, the other person will accept trust and be grounded with it as well, okay? So hopefully that helps. Some of you may be dealing with a challenge in your life. So there could be a health issue that you're getting past. So maybe you're struggling with something that you can't do anymore. So maybe you had an injury to your knee and you can't run anymore or can't, can't do the same sort of activity. So you're going to accept and move with what your new body will allow you to do and you're gonna love it. And you may even surpass expectations, but it has to be accepting that I was injured and then you can think I'm gonna to try to build myself back up, but I'm not gonna beat myself up for the injury and I'm not going to focus solely on that because I can still speak, I can still see, I can still hear, I can still move. I have a lot of positive things in my life. This is one thing, I'm using me as an example because it popped into my head. So accepting and then taking action on what you're gonna do about this thing that just happened. Um, we've all been there. We've all had, I think most of us anyway, have had some health setback or injury or disappointment, and we've had to figure out what to do with it. The acceptance is key. Um, I think the power of the mind is amazing. So just accepting that something's happened is the first step and then deciding that you're going to push um, because you want to get stronger. That's good. That's good. But you have to at least accept that something's happened. The other piece, like I said, is self-love. And I use coming out as an example. Um, if you're going to tell someone something about yourself, who you're dating, what you want in your life, et cetera. You have to say, I love and accept myself. I love and accept you. I value this relationship and I wanna share this with you so that we can be better and stronger friends. So acceptance equals, it kind of attracts more acceptance, doesn't it? I think. So um, that's the important piece with this for your health and for your well-being. Let's look at the cards themselves and see if there's any additional messages that come through for health. Um, accountability. So are you truly ready to do something? This card is just more of a question. It's not me pushing. When you're ready, it happens. When Until it's ready, don't push yourself and don't beat yourself up. So this is giving yourself time to get there. So many times, I wanna say like 75% of the time, I pull the five and the seven together because they show this very similar energy. This is a conversation that's hard to win. Um, or something that you're not kind of ready to dodge, a bullet that you can't dodge. And then this one is about, the reason be behind it is because either it's a little white lie that we tell to ourselves or it's something that we need to address somewhere else and we're kind of like not paying attention to it. So once you know what you need to do, be honest with yourself, be honest with others and change it. So now we're looking at seven of swords as um, sort of like, I know I need to do this and I haven't done it, so I'm going to do it. Flossing your teeth, for instance, can be an example. So if you got a cavity or there's a buildup of tartar and everything and the dentist gives you a hard time, you're going to start to floss. And you can just say, yeah, I don't floss, but I'll, I'll start. And make sure that you're really ready to start because the Seven of Swords tells me you need to put it to action. 
So um, there you go. That's the main thing there is make sure that you can put that to action. We talked a lot about an avoidable issue with the 10 of wands. I'll take it any day. It's a good card. But if I'm looking at health, this is preferable to 10 of swords. It leads to the 10 of swords if you don't take care of it. So focus on back um, health. Always we forget things like our, um, like our seating position here. So make sure your chair supports your back. Make sure that the pillows are fluffy. Make sure that you're putting neck support down, that you change out your pillows and your, your bedding occasionally, like the mattress. Look at all the different supports. Make sure your, your office is ergonomically um, sort of balanced out, all of that. The moon card in reverse can show issues with reproductive issues, uh, like the reproductive system, I should say, or even like the bladder. So some of you might have an infection or you might be having some, some challenges with, uh, with just getting pregnant or just general reproductive organs. So go to the doctor if any of that's happening. I'm just a tarot reader, but I'm picking up on the energies here that you wanna look at. So um, you should always go to a professional if there's anything going on in your body. Those are the main messages there for health. Let's look at wealth and career and life purpose here. Wealth, uh, we have the air guardian shifting your perception. I feel like this is a nice complement to what's going on around you. So environmentally, we got the five of cups. We, we saw the, the uh, pentacle facing downward. We wanna face it upward and we wanna have that dance of creation, not sort of like inviting in um, lower frequencies. Uh, there might be some sort of a blessing to the change that's happening. You may have just finally decided I'm moving out, I'm moving on, I'm moving up, this isn't it, because it's too much to shoulder. You don't have to do it alone. Remember, we got a queen, a couple of queens here, the queen of um, queen of wands, and then we also got a queen card here. So I would say it's 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 in your power to, to be able to do this if you want to. Um, looking at money, I'm actually quite happy that you have the nine of pentacles at the center. It feels like some of you could just, like I said, be very resistant to accepting help or to delegating, letting go of control. So focusing on those sorts of things would probably be very beneficial to you uh, this month. And then making sure that you, you have visibility into what others are doing. Since we got a seven of swords, I don't know, I almost don't care where it's at. And we got the moon too. So I would say you need to control the strings of the finances this month, have the purse strings basically. Look at the checkbook, look at the online stuff, have some visibility into finances, take a hard look at that, at what you're bringing in, what you're putting out what your budget is, and, um, and just be honest with yourself, with your partner, with your coworkers on that, okay? Ultimately, air, speech, movement, positive. I like what I see here. Um, and there may be one big sort of thing that happens, but after that, thunder and things start to roll. <laughs> so I feel like it's okay. Um, you need to feel whatever you're doing, by the way, for your job, for your life purpose. You should feel excited. I want to have the Nine of Cups euphoria that's, that's stepping in. And there should be the enjoyment that we also see with the Six of Cups. So somewhere between that would be great. Um, sort of feeling like this is familiar, this is fun, that you can share it with others. There needs to be joy in your, in your path, whatever your path is. If you're retired, it can be the activities in which you engage. If you are younger, it's what you're setting yourself up for. For the rest of us, it could also just make sure, be making sure that we have time for our children, for our friends, and for our inner child. Nurturing that is important. Grandchildren count, of course, in that as well. All right, looking at love. Uh, we have Sununas here, life force, um, express your driving passion, sensual and sexual powers are increased. Um, I think in a different deck, Druid, one of the Druid decks that I have, Druid Craft maybe, or one of them, Sununos is also associated with the devil card, um, but it, it's not necessarily the, it's not a worst case scenario or anything. But when I see this, it doesn't surprise me that passion is coming into it. We saw this card reversed. So when I'm looking at sensual and sexual powers, that definitely gave me a little bit of like devil type energy, devil reversed. We're wearing first chakra today. I'm wearing that rather. Um, and so I would say the important thing here is to not have limitations on unnecessary limitations on your power. So for those of you that might be signing a job contract this month, even though this is in relationships, it doesn't matter. I'm getting a message. So um, you want to make sure that you, the relationship is healthy between you and your employer so that they are not taking too much or asking too much. A lot of times, if you read the fine print, they'll ask for a ridiculous non-competitive clause, like years, or they take your clients or whatever. No, you need, you're in a very good market right now where you can negotiate more because people are looking for employees. So negotiate a contract that is not restrictive. 
Same thing for looking for an apartment or signing in uh, a mortgage. Take a look at what your um, what the terms are going to be. Are there is there some sort of hidden fees for like the HOA or whatever it is? Look at all the stuff to make sure that you understand the levels of complexity in the contract and make a better contract. Why is this coming through in love? Well, what is marriage but a contract? What is a relationship but an agreement? Um, and this is all about life force. And we've been looking at energy this month. There has to be an even exchange. This particular deity is not, neither good nor bad, but it, it, it is representing um, power, passion, sensual and sexual energies. So this, this color, we're working with that plus chakra number two. Um, so I would say it's going to be really important for you to be able to move into feeling your power, feeling your creative energy, um, feeling like let's let's fix this together. We've got this. That's how I would kind of look at that with any relationship issue. Let's look at the cards themselves. I'll get some additional things. I like to look at it in three different areas. If you're in a relationship, if you are looking for a relationship, or if you're not focused on that single and happy or disinterested, but I'll still tell you what's coming through with the relationships. Okay. Um, if you're in a relationship, the most important thing, it's coming back from the past. So we have the five and the seven that we want to look at, five of swords and seven of swords. So in the past, you might have had a tendency to find people that it was difficult for you to kind of speak up, right? Because, uh, or even kind of like let them know when something was wrong. There's going to be a key relationship this month. It doesn't have to be love, but the test will be honesty, transparency, and then maybe finding something out and how you're going to deal with that. So there'll be a pressure test. Um, ultimately, we've got two really good cards at the end, the six of cups. I love and trust you, um, even though you didn't do what you were supposed to do this time. And I feel like we can move past this. Uh, maybe someone tells you the truth and it's hard to accept it, but you that's a step in the right direction. So there's a pressure test, but it looks like you can come through it. The most important piece is the honesty and the accountability. If it doesn't happen, be careful. So for those of you in relationships or looking for relationships, there's a pressure test and an opportunity to grow, and you can decide if there's enough growth for you to proceed. Looking at the types of energy coming through and also how you're presenting yourself, you present yourself as a little bit stubbornly independent and starting to find your voice, hopefully by the middle of the month or the end of the month, having found your voice. Who are you calling in? A bossy person, a person that's really confident, um, someone that may be a little bit younger, less experienced, but not a lot. But nonetheless, they're on the same level as you. So um, you're, you're meeting someone that's going to push you a little bit. But I like Queen of Wands. If that's who you're bringing in, you're bringing in someone who is passionate, demonstrative of that passion, which is good because we've got this card of passion. But they may challenge you. It could be a little bit forthcoming. It could be a little bit too much. So this is where you get to speak up and say um, how much you're comfortable with engaging or dating or getting serious. There's a lot of different things that you can negotiate in that contract and negotiate the contract because you have the power and it should be fun. There's a little bit of work in a relationship, but it should be reciprocated and it shouldn't feel like you're carrying the weight of this relationship. If you're looking for love this month, um, be honest with what you're looking for and be specific with what you're looking for so the universe can deliver. If you do that, I actually see the potential to reconnect with someone or you find a really deep soul connection. Again, um, we could have either uh, Queen of Wands or like a, a fire sign. We could also have a water sign. We could have Scorpio coming through as well um, or Pisces or something like that. So you could have a nice um, water sign coming into your or Cancer. Um, you could have that coming into your life as well. But I think that the most important thing that I could say for in love or looking for love is transparency, honesty, honesty with what you're looking for, with what you need to do. And then also realizing that there's equal power. It doesn't matter what the status, the wealth, the title is of this other person. You're pretty even. So you're going to find a way now to figure out how to balance the scales out. OK, um, now, if you're looking, not looking for love and you're sort of just focusing on life, I've got good news for you. I think it's a really good time to be doing that because I see movement happening for you. Many of you are focusing on bringing forth some big manifestation in your life. And that should be what you're primarily working on. Um, this is the management card. 
I even prefer the Queen of Wands to the King of Wands because she has the ability to soften things a bit. She's more nurturing. She's more receptive. It's easier to work with the Queen of Wands and the King of Wands sometimes because it's too, that, that energy is too much on the throne where the Queen is more relatable. Um, so you have this ability to really make things happen if you put your mind to it. Uh, and I feel like people are gonna be an important piece of this. So even if you're not looking for relationships, your charisma, um, and your passion is going to attract Six of Cups energy and maybe some overzealous people, dare I say, with the um, Nine of Cups as well. So I want you to be careful of uh, anybody in your life that's just a little bit over the top and state your limits for that, okay? Good stuff coming through with relationships. The only thing is either a revelation or a need to, to call someone out on something that they're not doing right, okay? Okay. Finally, we have Speak Your Truth, which I'm just talking about here as your destiny card. We have Archangel Gabriel, which is one of the angels I work with all the time. And um, it's saying, thank you for helping me speak with integrity. I like that a lot. And um, I love that we're also seeing angels portrayed as both male and female. If you read my book, which is um, right behind me, the luminous ones, one of the things that I, I've connected with angelic entities before in, in dreams and meditations and also seen sort of like apparitions of them, they don't have a gender. They don't have a physical body. They are energy. So they are male and female and both. They're both or neither or beyond that. So when we look at Gabriel, it can be a he or a she and it can be an it. And usually when I look at the divine, it can also be an it. We don't need to gender the angels. Thank you very much. And we don't need to gender God. It's all created, like it's everything. Um, so with Archangel Gabriel, it's coming through here. Gabriel is speech and communication. And um, elevating the speech. So I, we were just talking about a good practice there, which is not to sort of like put in unnecessary pieces. So try to kind of keep things open, open to not like necessarily interpretation, but I would say like stay open-minded. Um, Queen of Wands sometimes needs to be open-minded. She has her ears open on this and the card wasn't reversed. So there's a lot of listening energy. And I just picked up on that as I'm looking at this. So Gabriel saying, listen to what others are saying. Good communication begins with understanding the message and understanding where the person is coming from. All righty, um, let's <laughs> take a look now at our quick review. And then we're gonna go deeper into the soul path. At this point, I always like to write down a few things so I can remember it when I get to the soul path. So let's do that at this point. Um, as I'm looking at the cards, I feel like we have a pretty good match of things here. I'm really happy with pentacles at the center. We have a lot of wands and swords. We have a pretty good mix of cups. So now I just wanna look at things to focus on. You know, the five and the seven of swords to me, that's number one on the list. So I want to look at um, accountability, I'm going to call it, um, and just kind of like how to deal with um, those two energies. So seven and five of swords, I'll know what to look at when I see it. And let's see, for the second thing that we're looking at, I want to focus on how to elevate some things. So in the environment, we have the five of cups reversed. So what's the blessing? What's the positive? What's, what are we getting out of this? So when we're looking at perspective, uh, I want to really focus on uh, availability. Like what, what's, what's the opportunity? Opportunity slash blessing. And then we'll do our wild card too. And don't worry, at the very end, you'll have a chance to ask me a question as well. If you haven't already hit like and subscribe, please consider doing that right now. Uh, it's a great time at, uh, to do it and a great way to show some support. All right, let me turn the camera down and we'll take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so your dual totem this month was lightning and also the scarab beetle. We're gonna talk about lightning first. So lightning, um, what I first heard was the sound of static or felt the energy of static. Uh, like I said before, this can actually indicate maybe a static uh, disruption or interruption between communication. So you really want to make sure that your communication is going through. And that's why we have the hair with the really big ears here, which is saying, listen and make sure that the other person is listening to you. Next piece. Um, I didn't just hear the thunder, but again, that crackling. Um, so I already feel like the movement's happening for many of you. It just requires some action or some additional communication just geeking out on what lightning is. It's a discharge between two charged areas, either in the sky or on the ground. It can happen um, anywhere, which is what we just talked about. 
And it may, this mechanism is saying you need to channel or do something with something. If you let it build up, then there's an argument, then there's a, a meltdown or a breakdown. And we want to instead have a breakthrough uh, rather than a breakdown, right? Find constructive outlets to make this energy go somewhere. So meditation is one, dance, exercise, art, therapy, you name it. But there has to be something and it does involve you moving something forward. If you feel emotionally charged, if the other person is emotionally charged, it's not the right time to have the conversation uh, because then a tower or a 10 of swords moment can happen and we don't want that. Um, you may need to work with someone else to be that mediator, to be the in-between person, an objective third party. The tower can actually be positive. And so even though we haven't seen it in the cards, we might as well have because it came through with the totem. Um, I saw the, the lightning as a symbol of the divine. <clears throat> it's inspiration. It's rapid, of, rapid positive change. It could also be groundbreaking news, something in a positive way. Whether it is a move, a change of job, or even a shift in relationship status, um, it basically is movement. And it means that there's divine intervention. Adjustment and action will follow. They are necessary. That's why we have the 10 of wands at the top. It's also encouraging you to be the change element, not to let that happen to you. Be the agent of change. Be the one that's throwing that bolt of lightning. You can ride the energetic sine wave, if you will, of, of the movement or the energetic wave. It's like surfing. So surf the wave of change. Um, while I was walking Apollo this morning, I saw my own sort of scarab beetle. It was a different type. I believe it was a, um, I think, fig, fig beetle. But basically, the important thing here is that uh, it was high frequency, and it clarified that the totem was positive change, transformation, if you will. Uh, and so you'll get stronger from whatever you've been moving through. And uh, because what I saw, and when I looked it up, it looked like it was a fig eating beetle, I would say something sweet will follow this, even if the moment seems a little bit bitter or sour. Keep pushing, stay open, stay positive, because when you look for something positive, you attract something positive. This is also an ancient symbol of Egypt. It's protective. It's a cycle of life and death and rebirth. Um, it's also showing action because that beetle lifts something several times its weight. You have to move it forward. Um, but if you do that, the hard work is rewarded. Abundance is in root. It's in motion. It's cyclical. You're not stuck, even if you don't like where you're at, or especially if you don't like where you're at, you can always move it from here. Nurture the things going on around you. They came through as little baby birds. You're going to need to take care of them. It takes a while before they're able to fly on their own. Um, and I saw about eight of them as well. Sorry, I flipped these cards. Um, I saw about eight of them. So that's telling me that um, the next month is going to be pretty auspicious for you. We talked a lot about moon energy. You've got it here. We've got the moon. We've got the moon. So it could be two months. There could just be a lot of energy around hope, fears, or anxieties. The good news here is you have the power to make things change um, through this difficult period, through the sort of murky waters comes something that blossoms. And this is your energy. This is your possibility. So I like that a lot. Um, overall, all good here. Um, the, the queen of or this queen, I should say, was on its side. So something could be coming in from a different or unexpected angle. Be open to that as well. Nine of Pentacles, fantastic for independence, for being able to be self-sufficient, for abundance. Love it. We have um, the Knight of Swords and also the King of Swords here. I want you to really be able to look and see things, for, look at things and see things from a different angle. Listen to what people are telling you. What have you got across the center? All, you've got a whole court here, <laughs> a king, a queen, and a knight. Um, they're all uh, different for the most part here. I mean, they're different levels here. We have two swords here. But the cool thing is that they're all connected with this, uh, I would say, the same sort of mental perspective. So whatever it is, I see a balancing of power happening. So don't be afraid to sort of like go where you need to go. You can avoid an unnecessarily tricky situation. Um, it's coming through in a different way. In the past, it was maybe not not standing up for something, not saying something, or having someone in your life that wouldn't let you do what you needed to do. Now we have someone trying to get away with something and you found your power, you found your strength, you're going to stand up to that. Moving up, moving on, moving out. Um, looking forward to what the next thing is, having a having a plan B, having the, the sort of future goals is going to be really important. Focusing on physical health, not shouldering too much burden, whether it's emotional or physical, is going to be really important as well. A perspective card here, looking at the positive, shifting your perspective, not letting uh, anxieties get the better of you, being honest. We have a couple of 
we have more than a couple. We have some integrity cards with five, seven of swords, and then also the moon. So we need to make sure that that's fixed in relationships. And then we have a couple of really um, heightened energetic cards. So finding a way to be balanced when you have this heavier energy that's coming through is going to be key. Loving yourself is so important to whatever you decide to do in your life, whether it's a change in how you take care of yourself, what you want to say to others, or even just your everyday relationship. If you don't love you, then you attract people in your life that show you pieces of that and, and test you and may not love you either. Um, they're trying to teach you to love yourself more. So that's the first and most important thing, even though we're not looking at relationships, accepting what your challenge is and deciding what to do about it because the queen of wands can almost create some magic. So I like that as well. Focusing on drinking enough, focusing on the reproductive organs and the back. I think that's going to be key. Those are the ones that showed up the most. Being honest with yourself and saying, I'm ready to do it, but really following through on that as well. Wealth, um, shift your perception. There might, there might be a positive move on the horizon for you. Uh, something tricky may have come out, but then you're going to be able to manage it and you're happy to know it rather than to have something fester. So speech is going to be so important for this. Uh, I like I like the center card here. I think that there's more than what you see here. There's more available. The nine of pentacles is not the end of the road, but when it when it's reversed, the power of it seems to be in the wrong direction. I'm using different decks, but we have a very similar figure between these two. We have you know a horned individual here. We have another one here. Um, and when we're looking at relationships, the power struggle could be something that you need to focus on. So let's segue into that. So with respect to relationships, passion, desire, and power are gonna be important. This is on some levels, devil type energy, devil in that like the contract has to be good for both. And I think you can do that. And we talked about looking for love. Actually in love, the main thing is honesty, lots of honesty and integrity cards here, but we have cards at the end that show that you can work through it. If you're looking for love, um, I think the most important thing for you is, can you manage this relationship? We didn't even talk about this before. There's a lot going on in your life. Do you have time? Are you making time for it? Um, and are you being honest with what you want from the partner? Are you also saying what you don't want? Communication is just so key. And I think whether you're in a, re in a relationship or looking for one, that's going to be important. If you're not looking for love, good for you. There's a lot to be had with respect to possibly making a physical move, moving up at work, learning more about yourself, overcoming fears and anxieties. Overall, it's really good. And you've got good resources this month. So I feel good across the board. Your voice, speaking your voice, finding your voice, not being afraid of saying what's important to you. That's going to be so um, vital to everything. And it's going to heal you ultimately. Let's go into the expanded, for not the expanded forecast, but the soul path right now. Starting with accountability issues surrounding seven and five of swords. Why are they coming through? All right. Seven and five of swords, what's going on? How can we be stronger? All right, so we have the green man, which is the emperor reversed in this particular deck. Um, if you look at this, notice how it is about creation. It's about power. It's about owning that power. With this card reversed, um, this is interesting. If we look at past influences, because even when I'm looking at the soul path, three card spreads can be past, present, and future influences or possibilities. So when I'm looking at this, what I'm seeing affecting the sort of, um, was I calling it, accountability issues. There could have been someone in your life that only focused on them themselves, and they didn't necessarily have uh, the integrity, the, the strength, the security to sort of show up the way they needed to. This can also be a parent, boss, or teacher that passed on insecurities to you because they didn't trust you. So they were like, are you sure you did your homework? Uh, did you do it or did someone else do it? Are you, you're not smart enough to do this. And like all these little things that can add up in our head and make us feel this. So I want you to get rid of their, their baggage. 10 of wands can be baggage. Um, and you're going to take power back. It's not their fault anymore. Now you are, uh, you are able to now redefine who you are and your destiny. You're going to pull it back. You don't need acceptance. You don't need forgiveness. You don't need anything from this person. You're going to take your own power back and you're going to make a better future, a better tomorrow. And that's what it's about. You've always had the capacity to do what you need to do. You can especially do it now. If there's someone around you that's still doing this, um, in which case, I'm sorry to hear that, then this is about 
pushing back, getting help, and reclamation, reclaiming the power. Because it's your power to enact and to sort of like to own. Yeah, step into your power. Okay, so that's it. You can do this. You can stand up to someone too. Sometimes we're afraid to do it because we'll think, well, if it's a friend, what if I lose the friend? If it's your lover, you're thinking like, what will I do without this person? Uh, if it's your parent, what if my mom or dad doesn't love me or my aunt or uncle, whoever? Well, if they don't, then they, they aren't ready for unconditional love. It's not, you deserve more. Hold space for them to come around. They can and they will. Um, this happens a lot with when you're choosing a career path that's different from what's expected or when you're dating someone that's expected. Parents especially, they build up an idea like my child will be a doctor, a nurse, a teacher or whatever. And if they do something else that upsets them. If you have a child and they come out as gay or transgender, you think, well, that's not what I expected. That's not your choice, that's their choice. Um, and uh, same thing if you're a child and it's your parent and they're in a life change, a divorce um, or uh, rem remarrying or whatever, we don't get to choose what other people do. We have to kind of honor their life, what they need. Some things aren't even choices. When I'm talking about things like gender and, and sexuality, that's not a choice, that's pre-programmed. So you just need to make peace with what already exists sometimes when it comes to things like that. When it comes to a change of direction, like a career path or a life purpose path, um, then this is something we also have to honor. We don't have to change. We just have to honor somebody's acceptance of their own path and their own truth. That's their truth. They just shared a truth with you. To deny the truth is to lie, is to ask them to lie to you. So if someone has to lie to you to be loved by you, that's not love. And if you have to lie to someone else to have them love you, it's not love. So you, you, you deserve more. Whatever it is, you deserve more and you have what it takes. So if and only if you can be honest and transparent with somebody, can you be truly in love? It's the litmus test for love or loved unconditionally when it's parents, for instance, or, you know, someone that you're working with or whatever. So that's what this is about at its core. Okay. There you go. Perspective was the next question. How to see opportunities and blessings amidst all the changes, since we saw a lot of change energy when I was looking at your totems. We have the world, which is fantastic, and it's upright. So um, <laughs> there's, there's, so sometimes when we accomplish something, it can either be frightening or anticlimactic. Um, anticlimactic because the path building up to this was such an expenditure, and then you're like, "This is it." Um, no, this is just the cherry on top, but the big cake that you built underneath it—that that was it. Um, and there's more, you're a baker, you can create more. I don't know why I'm using that metaphor, but that's what came to me. Um, and then the other thing is it can be frightening because once this happens, now what? I think you should always have a little bucket list of now what, <laughs> what next? Um, so this is a big move and a big change uh, and it's coming or it's happened. And so I think you should be really excited about the potential of something new. And then we see the seasons of change here winter, fall, spring, summer, coming through really beautifully on this card. And then we see like a labyrinth or maze in front showing the ability to navigate changes in the unexpected. Ultimately, what is it? It's a portal. It's like a little hobbit um, <laughs> house. If you look really close, you can see that there's a little portal there that's going to let you through to the other side or that you've built this great foundation and more will grow from this, okay? We can't see it when we're in the middle of this, right? But once you get to the end, you see what's next and you see what's, uh, why, you, why you kind of came on that path. So just give yourself a moment to breathe, focus on the fact that it's just a new doorway opening up and there's a lot to be excited about. The world, travel, dissemination, big changes, um, recognition, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so focus on the big picture. Let's look at the next piece. Wild card. What haven't we focused on? What else do you need to know? Okay, Seven of Pentacles, healing. And I always like to look at the Seven of Pentacles as healing, and I like that it's called out just as that on this. So it took a while to get where you're at. 
Um, for some of us, that's positive. Like we can look and see how much we've grown. So you might've already been at the healed portion of it. You're not healing, you're healed, or you're just about at the end of the healing process. So this can mean financial healing. It can be physical or emotional or spiritual. Um, it can also be rebuilding, like literally rebuilding a house or whatever, rebuilding your finances. Um, whatever it is, there's a peaceful acceptance and knowledge that I can and I will be better than where I, where I am right now. I, I'm not ready to give up. I'm not ready to clock out. Um, so this shows me also a test. Your test came through with the seven of swords. So the, the, um, the seven of pentacles comes through when we're just about through a, a repair, reparation in our life, but the universe will put in front of us one block, an insecurity, a temptation, um, a lie, whatever it is. And then we have to see through that. So that's all you're gonna be faced with this month is a little tiny roadblock that could either, you could overcome it and think, yay, or you could look at it and think, why now? I thought I did all the work. This is just the universe, one last test. It's basically the universe coming through and saying, you're just about done. I've opened the door here. We see it on the world card. Are you ready to walk through that? Before you can walk through that though, I have a test and I wanna see how you react to this test. So be the Zen sort of like green woman behind there meditating and say, I've got this, I see it. I see the way around it now. I'm not gonna go through this anymore. I can just go around the outside. I'm done with this sort of labyrinth or maze. I had someone argue with me what it was. I, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're just seeing that you have to work through a pattern on that card. It's open to interpretation. So um, the, the important thing here is I, I am ready and willing to accept this test and I'm gonna move past it. I'm gonna pass the test, right? Okay, good. So. A uh, quick little mini review and then we're going to meditate and then I will take a question from you, a psychic or um, silent question. So reclamation of power and an understanding that if someone asks you to be something that you're not, they're not ready for the relationship with you, whatever level of relationship that might be. That a bigger door is opening for you. So whatever loss, journey or change or shift that you've made, it's not the end, it's merely a beginning, but it could be scary at first, so start to think about what that means and what's next. Healing is still probably underway for most of you. Some of you may have just come through a difficult situation. Seven of Pentacles um, is showing that you are almost graduated from that. There'll be one little test that comes through. It may be someone trying to get away with something. It could be a temptation. And the Seven of Swords can be a test that we pass, which is like, should I do it? Um, should I try to do that? And you're not gonna try to do that because we see that it's gonna to come to the light of day. All right, so for the meditation today, I didn't go into this with a clear vision of what it would be, but I think I wanna use the scarab beetle because it's a really powerful symbol. Um, so you can imagine just kind of meditating on that iridescent carapace, I think it's called, the outside, the hard shell, the exoskeleton. Um, imagine that you are surrounded in this sort of, um, this iridescent energy. So we're looking at all the colors in the rainbow, but also kind of like this shell that's around you. Uh, and for a moment, I want you to feel the protection of that shell. This is going to guard you from any negative energy that could be coming your way. This is going to help you um, center your own energy and focus, and it's gonna make you stronger. Underneath this, you have two beautiful wings that are going to unfurl in a second. So before we get into the final question, I want you to just take a moment to feel your power, feel the protection around you, see it, that anything that's reflected to you since you have this iridescent shell, this harder shell around you, you can bounce it back or you can open up and receive it if it's something beautiful. So see the shell around you and I want you to think about this or repeat this, say, I am stronger than others know or realize. I'm stronger maybe even than I have thought I could be. And I'm ready for any challenge that comes my way. I own my strength, my power, my integrity, and I am infusing my auric field with uh, this strength, almost like a shell. It's now strong enough now that nobody's going to get in if they don't need to, if I don't want them to. Um, Actually, let's see, yeah, if I don't want someone to get into this shell, they're not going to get in. Let's make it stronger. Feel it, see it, push the outer boundaries of this and feel that you have a hard shell that is light reflective, that is also emanating its own light and you are powerful and you are ready. 
Now, as I play the singing bowl, imagine that you can stretch open the wings underneath this and you can take flight. I'm seeing you superimposed over the sun. So you can imagine that you spread your wings out and like an ancient Egyptian symbol or even like a thunderbird, I see you um, basically in the outline of the solar disk. Allow that solar energy to wrap around your mind, body and spirit and uh, enact any sort of healing that needs to take place. If you feel ready and willing to do so, I'd like you to stretch out your arms for a second and just let go of any tension that you're holding on to. Imagine that beneath your arms, you can see these beautiful wings that are unfurling, that you still have that shell if you need it, just like a beetle can have it, but it's pushed behind the wings and you're able now to move more quickly, more effectively towards any goal that you've set for yourself. You still have the protective shell. You have the connection to the sun. Your solar plexus now is um, a fire. There's this beautiful light that's coming from it. Rub your hands together, feel the heat, the light, and the energy that you've built here in this meditation. Let's also infuse that onto the heart space. Promise ourselves that we are gonna be stronger, more accountable, more aware, have the ears that we saw on that hair so that we can pick up on things. Our satellite is wide open, okay? Now, at this point, I'm going to read a final question, a final card for you. This is your psychic question. You don't need to type it, just think it. Hold it in your mind, hold it in your heart, and let's see what's coming through for you. All right, so collectively, let's answer the question in front of us and let's see what the best answer is. All right, we have the Ace of Cups. We literally did open up the satellite. For those of you that join my meditations or my readings enough, you know that I see the um, Ace of Cups as a satellite. So this is a great card for your final question here. Um, it's a yes, it's a yes exclamation point. Um, this is love and abundance in all forms. This can show a new relationship. This can show healing in a relationship. This can show good news on the horizon. This is a reminder that as with any Ace, as with the little chicks that I saw in my, uh, my dream last night, you have to be careful and mindful of things that are starting to take root or grow. Um, and so basically nurturing new things with love, with tenderness, nurturing yourself as well as you enter into a new path in your life. Um, letting things go. There's movement. Ace of Cups is overflowing. So uh, this is unconditional. This is overflowing. This is more than enough. This is abundance. Um, so I like what you're headed toward because it's bringing that Ace of Cups into your life. This is water of life here and we see things drinking from it. We see like a swan, we see a little leaf, we see um, an elk or something there. So I like this, it's, it's showing a lot of um, possibility coming through. Let's bring all of these symbols together and then we'll wrap up here. So again, the unconditional love that I was talking about, people need to love and see you. If you have to lie to be with someone or working for someone or whatever, it's not real. Um, also, you have the power, even if people have told you that you don't, because the emperor card is divine masculine. Take action, take power, you have it. Um, the world tree showing that you're moving towards a better tomorrow, that there's a little path there that's leading to something, even if it was a windy path. Um, and that, that also, if you're in a period where it's dormant, well, that's showing that spring is just around the corner. Or if you've lost something and there's dormancy, there's still going to be growth here. It's a cycle. I talked about finances earlier being a cycle. You have a good card anyway for finances, but there's room for more where that came from. Healing is the big so what this month, I would say. It's the wild card. So in addition to this queen card, which was talking about you know managing power and, and your emotions, the other big so what for you 
is a final test associated with the healing path that you're on. And we see love and abundance in your final question. So I see opportunity on the horizon. I see someone good or something good, um, something to be excited about. Okay, some really great messages for you and a pleasure to be here to read for you. So um, just a reminder on my schedule, I will be back again tomorrow uh, to read for Sagittarius. And then I'll be back on the weekend on Sunday uh, to read for Capricorn, I believe. Um, the whole schedule is on my website. I'll try to pull it up here as I'm talking. Um, actually, I'll just give you a link to that real quick while I'm bringing this all up. So if you ever need to see past, present, or future readings, you can go here. Um, before I do anything else or give you any other upcoming reading information, um, a reminder that all the information you could possibly need or want, if I can hold the card up, <laughs> is on my website. And I pin that link above, nicholasashbaugh.com. Thank you to everyone today who was kind enough to support me. Uh, a lot of the cards that you see in the expanded forecast today are direct results of your contributions. And the fact that I'm doing three bonus readings now per month is also a direct re result of that. I'd like to do more. So the more you give, the more I can give back. So thank you to everybody that's supporting me. I see we have roughly half the amount of likes as people present. So realize that that thumbs up can help a lot. You can only hit it once. It's not like Facebook or Instagram, but if you hit it once, people discover it. It's like a tip that costs nothing. Same thing with subscribe. It really, really helps the channel growth. So if you've ever been on the fence and wondering, what am I doing? Like, do it, it's good. So great way to show support that costs nothing, that helps me a lot. Join me on social media if you'd like. Um, here are all the links. They're also on my website, mostly everywhere I'm Nicholas Ashbaugh. I never send a message on social media and ask for anything. So if anyone sends a friend invite or asks for money or anything like that, that's a spam person or a scammer. Don't do that. Um, just a quick aside. If you wanna show support on replay, there's an option here called Applaud and it's right by the share button. Uh, it's on desktop primarily, also on Android. It's a great way to give back. I mentioned my book. If you're a fan of things like Lord of the Rings or um, like Dune, it's a, a book that I've written and you can check it out. It's about spiritual ascension, but through the lens of fiction. So you can read my website for more information if you'd like to. Let me try to get those dates to you before I sign off and then uh, we will call it a day here. Again, this forecast can always be used for the, uh, the next six to eight weeks. So feel free to come back later and look at this. What I'll do by tomorrow is add in um, some additional, uh, uh, basically bookmarks and time codes so that you can go straight to the section of this that you would like to. So let me see, here we go. Here's the upcoming dates that I wanna share with you. So um, you can get the, the links on my website, but uh, we have uh, Sagittarius and Capricorn as the next two readings. And then I'll also be doing a couple of bonus readings at the end of the month, just to let you know. And the mid month one is already on my main website. Again, you can go to the scheduling link that I posted earlier for all of that. And if you haven't already followed me on social media, check out Instagram and uh, TikTok. You can again go to my website for those links because I'm starting to post more there. All right, thank you everyone so much for being present today. Thank you, Maria, for your help with moderating. And thanks to everybody who gave me super stickers today and super chat. Um, like I said, I wanna to start to do more uh, readings here. Maybe later this year I can experiment with um, you know, doing some sort of a weekly or something, but I, I'm not quite there yet. But the more support I get, the more I can actually pair out other parts of my schedule and dedicate to the channel. So I'm continuing to find different ways to grow it. So thank you so much. Much love and light, everybody. Have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow if you'd like to show up. All right, same time, same place. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.